Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of an early corded wear individual from Czechia. Uh, he had Y-DNA I2A, which is nowadays most typical in the Balkans, and mitochondrial DNA H2A1. Let's begin with the video. And this is what he looked like. Um, he's predicted to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose and brown color hair with my Nashako tool. Uh, with my hair shape tool, he's predicted to have curly hair. Uh, second in the uh, possibility prediction is wavy hair, followed by that is straight. And last place is kinky. So he did not have kinky hair. Um, you know, I asked artificial intelligence to generate a picture of a of a guy with brown eyes and curly hair and this is what it generated for me. I wouldn't say this is curly hair, I'd say this is more of a kinky hair shape. But he did not have straight hair, he had curly hair. Uh, so I guess he was, he could have looked similar to what this image is. Uh, he's predicted to have Estonian eye shape, so pretty much European facial morphology and with snipper free he's actually also predicted to have green or hazel eyes, white skin and brown hair. Minus code actually does have a does give him a pretty big uh, likelihood percentage of hazel eyes so hazel eyes is not out of the question when it comes to his phenotype but you know green eyes at 7.8 percent probability is pretty improbable pretty unlikely he's heterozygous for bh2 and bh3 somehow he does not have bh1 despite having bh2 and bh3 and he does not have bh4 uh, he's got a genotype in slc 45a2 coding for typical european skin tone and if you look at his genotype in asip once again he's got pretty much lighter skin tone in general uh, and in tier he's actually got the Mediterranean blonde hair blue eyes variant uh, he does not have any draft variants in MC1R or the main variation in IR4 that has to do with ginger hair so we know for sure he's not ginger uh, he's got a genotype in tier 1 which is actually the only genotype uh, that was present in his file for the whole tier 1 gene where he's got a geno genotype suggesting darker traits, darker pigmentation and he's got mostly derived variants in SLC45A2 which suggests he had lighter eyes and higher probability of green eyes relative to blue eyes with an amber center. Now we're moving on to his uh, GED match results. Let's start with Eurogenes K13. It's kind of an interesting result. It's interesting because he's scoring West Mediterranean. This is not a component that other corded wear individuals score and it does sort of um, signal something we're going to see with the other calculators as well, which is a presence, a high presence of Anatolian Neolithic farmer admixture in this individual. With the Oracle uh, getting modeled as a mixture of Swedish plus Kabardine, a mixture of Northwest European plus Caucasus, that's typical. But what we see with MDLPK11 here is 27% Neolithic, very high percentage of Neolithic for somebody that's a corded wear individual. He's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Belbiker plus Iranian Neolithic and Belbikers are a lot more Neolithic farmer um, Anatolian Neolithic farmer than the corded wear individuals. Uh, this is what he scores with MDLP K16. Here we can see once again quite high um, percentage of the Neolithic category. I score like 18 or 19 for example. And with the Oracle he's getting modeled as a mixture of Arcadian plus uh, Tajik. 88% uh, Arcadian, 12% Tajik. This is what he scores with Harappa World. Uh, once again another Another thing you can notice is the 23.5% Mediterranean. That's not a typical score for a corded wear individuals. Like corded wear from Estonia would score like 15% Mediterranean. Literally like 10% less Mediterranean than this individual. Uh, with the Oracle we see the same pattern. North European plus Tajik. And this is what he scores with Pandiana K12. What do we see here? Once again, 28% Anatolian Neolithic. Um, in fact, more Anatolian Neolithic than Caucasus Hunter Gatherer. So this is a very Western shifted individual, and we see this uh, with the Oracle as well. Corded wear from Estonia plus Anatolian Neolithic or even Iceman. Uh, and this is what he scores with Pan DNA LK10. Uh, pretty high ENF here, but also kind of high CHG here. There is more CHG than ENF with this uh, result. Uh, with the Oracle, we see. This is what this is what you would typically see in a corded wear result, right? You would typically see something like this: Estonian plus Iranian, Estonian plus Kurdish, Ukrainian plus Pashtun. This is something you would typically see for a corded wear individual. Uh, all of the other oracles are very atypical. And this is what he scores with ancient Eurasia K6. Um, once again, a pretty typical corded wear result. Uh, maybe a little bit higher ancestral North Eurasian than what's typical for Belbikers, for example. Uh, with the Oracle closest to Ukrainians, followed by Norwegians, followed by middle late Bronze Age step, which are, uh, you know, Sintashta. And he's actually getting more as a mixture of Adige plus Western Hunter Gatherer or Estonian plus Lisgin. Uh, maybe the slides are going too quickly. I can't catch up. But basically, this individual is a little bit more Anatolian Neolithic farmer shifted than what's typical for Estonian corded wear or Fatianovo or basically all the other Eastern corded wares. 
now we'll be taking a look at his traits with my genome analyzer tool by the way this is not on my website uh, I'm actually running this from um, from my own local computer and I can't I cannot upload this code to my website why because Google sites does not allow pop-ups and you need pop-ups to run this uh, it does not function without pop-ups so let's go ahead and select our file uh, which is this individual we're gonna name him um, Squirted. Yes, squirted. And we get this uh, little result, right? So uh, he's got AG in Comets Valmet variation, meaning a Valmet genotype, intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake, and intermediate dopamine level. So he's got one warrior and one warrior allele. For MAOA, he's got TT, which means actually higher dopamine levels. So warrior, two warrior alleles for MAOA. So he's more warrior than warrior if you account for MAOA and Comet together. Uh, GG, so no derived, no gold order variance in drd 2 pro in pro variation, which means higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and higher likelihood of schizophrenia. AA here, well, these two go together, this one and this one. Uh, GG in this variation of DRD2, which is the, this one, which is the typical gene type for most humans and leads to a slightly lower risk of schizophrenia and nicotine dependence, so a little bit less dopamine D2 receptor sites. GG here, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to a slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites and a slightly lower risk of ADHD and alcoholism. Uh, we're going to skip all that. What about 5-HTTLPR? Does not have long-form 5-HTTLPR. It's got short-form 5-HTTLPR. Just like most of you guys watching this video, you probably have short-form 5-HTTLPR, uh, which means you have some problems, some issues when it comes to transportation of serotonin but some people are lucky to have long form 5 htt such as myself for example i'm really proud of that i'm lucky to have long form 5 htt opr and therefore uh, better transportation of serotonin and lower odds of depression but this is not this individual this guy has a slight increase in the risk of depression for lactose persistence does not carry european lactose persistence mutations for the empathy gene AA and OXTRs, this variation, which means two sociopath variants for reduced OXTR expression and lack of empathy. Most likely, uh, a little bit lower empathy than what's typical for you guys. Uh, diabetes, CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. That's the only variation for diabetes we really care about out of the, pres the ones presented here. Uh, hemochromatosis is not a carrier. For Alzheimer's, these two are the ones that matter, so he's not genotyped for them, so we can't really say. Uh, Miscellaneous section, no micro P, you know what that is, I'm not going to pronounce this. Once again, I um, I can't pronounce these, these words. Some of these words I can't pronounce because it's YouTube and I, I rely on monetization here. Slightly increased cranial size and 1% higher IQ, slightly higher IQ. And CC here, which means better performing muscles, more likely sprinter than an endurance athlete. Um, albinism and atypical traits panel. Not a carrier for albinism type 1b. Now you see at the end of my little page, at the very bottom, there are these two options. Polygenic risk scores and reset, re reset polygenic risk scores. If you, you know what, you know what guys, if you pay me, I'll send you uh, the HTML for this and you can run this from your own computer. If you, if you pay me, I'll send this to you. But um, you're not going to see this on my, you're not going to see all of this on my website. So we click on the polygenic risk scores and we get this window opening up, which means this individual has 0 0.5 times the average odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans and 0 0.4 times the average odds of schizophrenia for Sub-Saharan Africans. So this individual is like two times less likely to have schizophrenia than the average person. And for diabetes, well, nothing was found in the file, so we can't make a judgment on that. But yeah, this individual, despite, actually what's interesting is despite having GG here and AA here in DRD2, has still got a lower, two times lower odds of schizophrenia than what's typical for the average person. That's very impressive. So that's pretty much all there is to it. That's pretty much all there is to this genome. You can download this genome in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. And leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.